Today we'll be talking about the pulmonary tuberculosis. Pulmonary tuberculosis uh, or a tuberculosis as a whole is the infection caused by the mycobacterium tuberculosis and it has got significant impact on the world health. Mycobacterium tuberculosis is a non spore forming bacilli that are of aerob aerobes and they have got a property in which uh, they are resistant to discoloration with acid washing. So we don't generally use the gram staining for the uh, for the staining of this mycobacterium tuberculosis. Uh, they have got property of intense staining with aniline diet and they are also known as acid fast bacilli. Now, how does the transmission of the tuberculosis occurs? It is transmitted via the ear bone root and the unit of transmission is the droplet nuclei. nuclei. And how, this, uh, how does this get transmitted is by the various respiratory maneuvers like coughing, sneezing, spitting, singing, or even uh, teaching, or even by the consumption of the uh, milk or milk product uh, that contains the tuberculosis uh, bacilli. Now, what happens if a patient has got tuberculosis and uh, the patient cough out the uh, bacilli into the droplets into the ear? If uh, the ear has got the proper exposure to the sun, uh, then the droplet remains suspended ear in ear for only about an hour or two. But if uh, the droplet is present in the uh, present in the area which is dark and there is moisture, then even the bacteria can, uh, even the bacilli can survive for hours to months. And if uh, there is presence of uh, winds, uh, then it can get dispersed to the other places. And what happens when this uh, uh, nuclei, uh, when this droplet containing the bacilli uh, goes to, uh, is introduced into the host? The first thing that may occur is uh, it can get uh, directly infect the lungs and it can drain to the hilar lymph nodes uh, or it can even uh, get uh, drained uh, to the cervical uh, lymph nodes uh, or it, or in other any lymph nodes and if the patient got uh, patient uh, ingest uh, the infected milk uh, then it may go into the lower ileum and sacrum and get infected there and in other cases, it may go uh, through the secondary dissemination to the other organ via the lymphatic spread. Now, moving into the classification uh, of the tuberculosis, uh, it's based upon the uh, sequence of events following the first exposure, and it is uh, classified as primate tuberculosis. In which uh, there is tuberculosis uh, in the person who has got no previous exposure to the mycobacterium tuberculosis bacilli, or it could be a post-primary tuberculosis where there is endogenous reactivation in a person who is previously exposed to the mycobacterium tuberculosis or exogenous reinfection. Classification can also be done according to the location of the tuberculosis and that can be a localized disease or a disseminated tuberculosis. A localized disease can further be classified into pulmonary tuberculosis and extra pulmonary tuberculosis. If the patient has got tuberculosis of the lung parenchyma, then it is known as pulmonary tuberculosis. Other all tuberculosis are known as extra pulmonary tuberculosis. That is if the patient has got the tuberculosis of the pleura or any lymph nodes, uh, then that is known as the extrapulmonary tuberculosis. And the disseminated uh, tuberculosis is said to be present when the tuberculosis involved is involved in more than two non-contagious uh, contagious uh, site. And the person is said to have the familiar tuberculosis if the patient has got the lesion, uh, tubercular lesion in the lungs, which are uniform and are in the site of the millet cell. Now moving on to the uh, natural history of the tuberculosis. What happens if the patient has uh, gets the bacilli of the tuberculosis and the patient is not treated? Firstly, the when there is infection of the tuberculosis, in 95% of the cases, there is initial cont containment of the disease. And only in the 5% of the cases, there is early progression of the tuberculosis. That is, the patient will have prim primary tuberculosis. And then the patient who in the 95% of the patient who has got initial containment, uh, in the 90% of the cases, the tuberculosis gets self-cured. And in only in the 5% uh, of the cases, there is the presence of secondary progression. Now, moving on to the pulmonary tuberculosis, I'll be dealing with the pulmonary tuberculosis in this lecture. Pulmonary tuberculosis means the tuberculosis of the lung, parenchyma. And as I've already told you, it is a respiratory infection caused by the mycobacterium tuberculosis. 
Now moving on to the pathology and pathogenesis. As I've already discussed, mycobacterium tuberculosis is spread by the uh, inhalation of the aerosolized uh, drop nuclei from the other infected patient. Once inhaled, the organism lodged in the alveoli and initiated the recruitment of the micro macrophages and lymphocytes. And macrophages undergo transformation into epithelioid and Langer health cells, which aggregate with the lymphocytes to form the classical tuberculous granuloma. That's a classical finding that is present in case of the tuberculosis. Now, how does a tuberculous granuloma look uh, in the histopathological examination? Uh, in the in the slide, uh, you can see there is uh, some black arrow and white arrow, and you can see that there is the normal long in that. Uh, Point zone by the arrow, there, the normal lung tissue is lost, and instead, uh, there is a presence of large number of macrophages and multinucleated giant cell. And the, uh, the central area of the focus shows the caseatic G generation, that is, there is presence of the KGS necrosis. And uh, since there is aggregation of the numerous uh, granulomas, uh, and this leads to the formation of the primary lesion or the cones complex, which is a pale yellow cases nodule, which is usually a millimeters to one to centimeter in uh, diameter, and it is usually characteristically situated in the periphery of the lung. And what happens to this uh, gone focus is that it can spread to the primary, uh, to the hilar or mediastinal uh, lymph gland to form the primary complex, uh, which can heal uh, spontaneously in most of the cases, or it can go to the direct extension and which can lead to the progressive uh, pulmonary tuber, progressive primary pulmonary tuberculosis, or it, even it can uh, spread to the pleura, leading to the pleural effusion, or it can even have the uh, blood spread and which can lead to the skeletal or renal or the genitourinary infection, which can be often, patient can often present uh, months or year after, uh, years later, the initial uh, infection of the pulmonary tuberculosis. Or if the patient, if the patient has got immunocompromised state, uh, they even can have massive spread leading to the milieu pulmonary tuberculosis and even meningitis. And uh, the spread of organism to the hydro lymph node uh, leads to the uh, similar pathological reaction and the combination of the primary lesion and the regional lymph node is referred to as the primary complex of the ranki. And this is the fi uh, same figure showing the various uh, uh, dissemination of the infection. And after uh, the, there is uh, the spread of the infection, the uh, reparative process in case the primary complex into a uh, fibrous capsule, limiting the spread of the bacilli. And there is, uh, the, after hence, after that, in 95% of the cases, there is no further complication and the lesion usually eventually calcifies. Or even as I have already told you, or even it may go to the lymphatic or hematogenous spread and the patient may present with the uh, spread of the disease or disease uh, from, of the tuberculosis in the other extra pulmonary site, like bone, liver, kidney or lungs. Or the patient may even have good latent tuberculosis and it is usually uh, demonstrated by the tuberculin skin test or an IGRA test also known as interferon gamma release assay. Now, moving on to the natural history, uh, as I've told you, in cases of the uh, primary tuberculosis, the patient may uh, present uh, after uh, three to six months, the patient may present with meningeal or miliary or pleural disease. And if up to the three years, the patient may present with uh, gastrointestinal bone or joint or lymph node disease. Uh, in, ar in around eight years, uh, the patient may present with renal tract disease. And from three years onward, uh, it's usually post-primary disease due to reactivation or the reinfection. Now moving to the risk factors, uh, there are certain uh, patient-related and associated diseases risk factors that increase the risk of the tuberculosis. And the patient-related uh, risk factors include the extremities of ease like in children or in elderly patients or the uh, patient who, who has got the habit of smoking of the cigarettes, BDs, or the patient has got first generation immigrants from high prevalent countries, or there is associate patient has got associated diseases like uh, HIV, or the patient uh, is the case known case of diabetes mellitus, or the patient has got chronic kidney disease or silicosis or various other immunocompromising uh, diseases. Now moving on to the clinical features of the tuberculosis, uh, the patient may have got the asymptomatic. Uh, 
uh, presentation. That is, there is insidious deployment of the tuberculosis, which develops slowly and over the several weeks. Weeks, or the patient may have good uh, galloping, uh, galloping conjunction uh, phase, like the patient is extremely ill with a rapid progression, and it can even lead to the rapid death. So symptoms can be respiratory or constitutional, and the respiratory symptoms are often non-specific and can mimic virtually any other respiratory diseases. And the common respiratory symptoms uh, include the cough, which is almost always present, which is initially dry, but uh, later it go, uh, goes uh, with the moderate sputum production. And in the patient who has got cough for more than three weeks, you should always suspect if the patient has got the pulmonary tuberculosis in absence of there is any cardiorespiratory diseases. And the patient may present with variable degree of hemoptysis. And you should know that in the in more than 85% of the patient who present with chronic cough, the patient doesn't have good pulmonary tuberculosis. So it's very important to differentiate all the respiratory diseases from the pulmonary tuberculosis. If the patient has good cough um, less than uh, three weeks, you should also keep the other differential in the back of the head, like acute bronchitis, acute bacterial pneumonia, or viral pneumonia, or any other suppurative lung disease. And if the patient presents with cough more than three weeks, so always think of other differentials, like other than pulmonary tuberculosis, like bronchitis, COPD, lung cancer, asthma, or any cases of the heart failures, may, which may be due to mitral stenosis or other any causes of the congestive heart failure. And the second most common symptom is the uh, chest pain, and it is usually dull lagging. But however, the patient may present with the acute chest pain, chest pain like in cases in the patient who has got some pleural parenchymal lesion, or the patient has pleurisy, or the patient has pneumothorax, or the patient has got uh, muscle strain due to persistent coffee, cough, or due to the complication of cough that may be refractured, or the with the extensive involvement of the uh, pulmonary system that is due to extensive disease. Patient may also present with dyspnea, and it is usually a late uh, symptoms, and it signifies the patient has got advanced disease or the, uh, there is uh, extensive involvement of the bilateral lung. And however, the patient can present with uh, dyspnea early in the course of disease if the patient has got uh, TB pleural effusion or pneumothorax or interbronchial tuberculosis, or the patient presents with the ARDS. Now, moving into the constitutional syndrome, there are uh, there may be uh, constitutional symptoms can be present even in case a patient who has got respiratory system or sometimes even the patient, patient may not have any respiratory symptom and the patient will only have the constitutional symptoms and the constitutional symptoms include uh, fever. It's often present and it is usually present in the late afternoon or evening with low grade at onset and however it becomes high grade as the disease progression and the patient usually have the night sweat especially in the cases of the advanced disease. And the other constitutional symptoms include uh, tiredness, malaise, lassitude, which is lack of interest in work or play, loss of appetite, uh, appetite and weight loss. And now when doing the physical examination, uh, you may not find any uh, particular finding. And even in the case of extensive uh, disease, the physical finding can be normal. However, in cases of the patient who has got uh, the chronic uh, chronic course or intolerant course, you may find the videos uh, a various non-specific finding uh, in case of examination, like uh, the patient may have an anemia leading to pallor, or the patient may have wasting or any clinical features of protein energy, malnutrition, or tachycardia fever. Or, uh, However, the clothing is the very least uh, with unusual feature of the feature in the patient who has got the tuberculosis, but that can be present in cases of the extensive disease or in the patient who has coexisting superative lung diseases. On physical examination, uh, you may find out the combination or isolated finding of collapse, fibrosis, cavitation, or pleural, any other pleural diseases. And if there is involvement of one uh, unilateral lung, you may find out the asymmetrical abnormality of the chest, uh, chest wall or the chest uh, region, or there will be decreased chest expansion, expansion of the affected site. And usually the physical finding is more prominent in the upper lobe or apical segment of the lower lobe. And it could be due to the, and you can find out uh, there can be detection of the infraclavicular region with the vision of the trachea to the affected site in case of collapse or fibrosis, or there will be reduced breath sound on the affected site, or you can even find out uh, there is presence of the bronchial breath sound in auscultation if the patient has got tubercular pneumonia. 
or in cases if the patient has got a large cavity to the region, you will find out the amphoric breath sound, or it could be uh, a fibrocavitary uh, disease can lead to coarse crepitation or post uh, crepitation. In case patient who has got a partial bronchial obstruction, the patient may even present with occasional wheeze. So there will be can be a, a large uh, range of physical finding in patient who has got tuberculosis. And all this has been summarized in the box. Uh, that is, uh, uh, in cases uh, initially in four to eight weeks, the patient may present with influenza like in this. And if you do a, a skin test, a tuberculin test, it could be uh, so positive. On, and the disease can be uh, like uh, the patient may have got present with the uh, enlargement of the lymph nodes and the presence of lymphadenopathy or all in the chest examination, it could be cavitation or it could be a miliary tuberculosis, could be a collapse, consolidation, or even the patient may present if there is in the compromised the patient may present with meningitis or pericarditis. And as I've already told you, the patient may present with chronic cough or fever, uh, which is uh, fever, and then the patient may present non-resolving pneumonia or the present even with the, uh, pleural effusion or constitutional symptoms like weight loss, central debility. And in uh, some of the cases, the patient may even present uh, with the complication and it could be pulmonary complication or non-pulmonary complication. And the pulmonary complication includes massive hemoptysis or uh, the fungal infection like aspergilloma or uh, obstructive airway disease, bronchopleural fistula or a longer pleural calcification or patient may present with non-pulmonary complication like laryngitis, enteritis, amyloidosis, anorectal disease or infima necessitans. And now how to do a diagnosis of the patient. If the patient presents with respiratory or constitutional symptoms, I will suspect a patient with tuberculosis. Now what to do? The first thing that you need to do is the you do the collection of the sputum and you look for the sputum examination. And that is the uh, non-invasive, uh, non-invasive easily available test. And the other test uh, that can be done uh, to diagnose a pulmonary tuberculosis include bronchoscopic with washing or bronchoscopic alveolar lavas. In cases of the children, you can also look for the gastric washing. And if the patient has got extrapulmonary uh, tuberculosis, then the specimen that is required uh, is a cerebrospinal fluid or ascitic fluid, or even you can do a tissue biopsy from the affected site. And for the diagnosis, uh, you will look for the tuberculin skin test. It, however, it has got a uh, low sensitivity and specificity, and it is usually done to find out if the patient has got latent tuberculosis. For the diagnosis, you look for the staining of the sputum that is done by the JDN staining or oram and fluorescent staining and other various uh, methods uh, of the examination include nucleic acid amplification, or even you can go for the culture of the sputum. And the culture can be done by the traditional solid uh, medium like a uh, LJ medium, or you can even go for the newer method of the liquid media with the use of the liquid media, or you can uh, look for the adenosine DMA from the pleural fluid. And in some of the cases, you may not uh, go to the conclusive diagnosis despite of the rapid extensive uh, evaluation. And still, you think that clinical the patient has got tuberculosis, then even you can use the empirical uh, treatment of the treatment with the uh, anti tubercular drugs. And in, the effect is usually seen after the five to response is usually seen after five to ten days of the, after the use of the antitubercular drugs. And the other baseline blood test uh, that should be needs to be done is the complete blood count or C-reactive protein erythrocyte element, so rate urea and electrolyte and liver function test. This would be needed to look for so that we can find out how extensive the disease is and also for the use of the uh, medication. Now moving on to the sputum collection, how to collect the sputum. Sputum is uh, collected uh, twice. First, initially, uh, the sputum uh, is collected at the presentation and the next sample of sputum is collected one hour after the collection of the next sample. And this slide uh, showed the jet and staining. Uh, Jet and staining, and you can uh, see the black arrow showing the acid fast bacilli, and you can see that there is the uh, red carbol fusin stain uh, despite the washing with the acid and alcohol. There is extension of the staining. 
Now moving on to the nucleic acid amplification uh, test and it consists of the gene export and the line proof assay. And gene export is a rapid molecular test and it is recommended by WHO and the result comes with it, uh, within two hours and it has got both greater sensitivity than sputum smear microscopic examination. So every suspected case of the tuberculosis should undergo the gene export. Uh, gene export um, and uh, all the specimens such as uh, cerebrospinal fluid, gastric aspirates, okay, or leaf node biopsies can also be projected uh, through the uh, gene export test. And now moving into the line proof assay, uh, it is a PCR based test and it is also used for diagnosis of TB and to determine the susceptibility of the TB to different uh, TB drugs. Uh, however, uh, since it uh, needs the higher bacterial loads in samples, so it is uh, only done if the patient has got a positive uh, gene export test. The other test includes tuberculosis culture and drug sensitivity testing, and it is especially done in special media like solid media and liquid media. Uh, and the solid media are the traditional uh, ways of the uh, culture growth, and it takes a uh, longer uh, time, that is two to eight weeks, and the liquid media only takes two, two to six weeks. And uh, positive, we should do the culture of the of all the sputum culture should be done if the patient has tuberculosis and we success, uh, suspect the patient has got the uh, drug resistance or the, if this by the patient and if the patient doesn't improve. Now moving on to the other test that is uh, IGRA, that is interferon gamma release agent. And this uh, test uh, is based on the concept that uh, the uh, organism, all the immunity uh, that is exposed, uh, immune system that is exposed uh, to the uh, tubercular bacilli produces the interferon gamma and uh, what we do is uh, we put the patient with the anti antitense of tuberculosis and the, uh, if the patient has got already uh, has already got tuberculosis uh, bacilli then the patient uh, the immune system of the patient will uh, produce interferon gamma and we measure that so it is used uh, to determine if the patient has got latent tuberculosis or not and the next test to determine the patient has got latent tuberculosis or not is tuberculin skin test in which uh, tuberculin is uh, injected uh, into the skin surface of the forearm and we look the read, take the reading after 72 hours. If it is more than 9 centimeters, then it is said to be positive. And the other test uh, to determine if the patient has got tuberculosis is the chest radiogram. It's a very simple test, non-invasive test. And uh, in chest radiogram, we can find out the various radiological findings. There can be a collapse or consolidation or cavitatory lesion, even it could be chip pleural, pleural effusion, or it could be miliar diffuse shadow. And we have to always uh, think of other differentials in case of patient who has got all these chest x-ray findings and who should further look for the sputum examination and other examination for the definitive diagnosis. In a radiograph, uh, in the uh, figure as in the uh, chest radiograph shown, in, shown with the arrow, you can uh, see the patient has got upper lobe lesion with the cavitatory lesion. Or the patient may have got uh, focal opacities in the left uh, lower zone, which may present patient may present like a uh, chest X-ray, which uh, shows as the pneumonia. Or even you can uh, find out the extensive involvement uh, showing the consolidation or with a pleural effusion, as in the figure in the right side. Or the patient may even present with the paratracheal lymphadenopathy. And there can be some cavitatory lesion, as in the figure there in the right upper uh, lobe, there is cavitatory opacity. Or then there could be a bilateral upper space, upper lobe, your space shadowing with cavitatory lesion, as in the figure. So now what will you do if the patient has got the cough for more than two or three weeks and the patient has got coughing out of sputum without, without uh, blood and the patient has fever with other constitutional symptoms like loss of appetite and on intestinal weight loss. For all this uh, patient, you should always uh, think that the patient is a presumptive TB cases and you should, uh, you should look for the sputum examination. And if there is access to the gene export, you should always uh, do further, look for the gene export test for the diagnosis and you should also order a chest radiogram that is a chest x-ray and uh, about the treatment we'll deal about the treatment of the pulmonary tuberculosis in this next lecture thank you